Hello, in this video I'm showing you how to bind the T4R thermostat to the T3R receiver and then also the T3R thermostat to the T4R receiver. So this video is more pointed at the engineers because I know how difficult it can be when you're out on the job trying to diagnose a fault and how useful it would be to have a short video just reminding me of what buttons I need to be pressing to rebind two units. If you are an engineer, then I'll just remind you, if you click on that save button below, it will then save this video to your YouTube library. And then when you are out on the field and you're trying to rebind two units, you can quickly just click on your YouTube library and then you'll be able to watch this video. And that'll save you have to look through these rubbish instructions or search online trying to find out how to rebind two units. Another quick point for the engineers is that you may know that I've already made videos for the T3R and the T4R, how to set them up, program them, and of course use them. Now, if you've fitted one for your customer and they're struggling on how to use their programmer, then you could point them in the direction of these videos and then that, that may help them out and then save you having to spend some time on the phone re-explaining how to use their programmer. If you are looking to purchase one of these programmers, then I have left links in the description below taking you to all the programmers I have mentioned, along with links to all my videos. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 20 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find my video helpful in any way, then please give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. And of course that will help others to find this video. And of course, if you enjoy my video, you can click subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's bought me a cup of coffee and left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. Right, now let's get on with the video and show you how to bind these units together. All the links throughout this video can be found in the description below, at the end of the video, or in the cards above. So here we go, this is the T3R and its receiver, and here is the T4R and the receiver. You can see the receivers are, are different on the T3R and the T4R, and the engineers who know this also got the, um, yeah, the OT, the open therm connection inside here. Uh, but we're not worried about that right now. So I'm just going to show you how you can pair these or bind these together. Now, just to show that these are working, we've got our, our green light on here on that unit. So we've got a solid connection with that one and we've got the green light on there. And just to show you that, they're both in manual. So I'm just going to put a temperature up on that one there. Okay, don't forget we've got to press that twice to make that come on. So I'll put that up to say 23 degrees and we listen for the click. And there you go, you can see the little lights clicked on there. Okay, so you can see that, and we just turn that back down again. So you can see that go back down. And listen for the click. Okay, and we'll also just show you that this one here is bound also. So let's just put that temperature up to say uh, 28. Now listen for the click. So you can see both these units are bound together. Now let's just put that temperature back down again. So say uh, 15. And then we listen for the click on the receiver box. There you go. So there you go. You can see both thermostats are bound to their respective receivers. Now for whatever reason, whether you want to swap these for testing or someone's broken unit as an installer, you'll know that it comes in really handy to be able to do something like this. So hopefully this is going to help you out if you are in that situation. So the T4R is definitely easier to rebind. There's less buttons to push and it just follows through a little bit easier. But having said that, the T3 is very easy also. There's just a few more buttons. And again, that still follows through in a logical fashion. So both receiver boxes both operate in exactly the same way. So these are nice and straightforward. Right, so let's do the, let's bind the T4 to the T3 first of all. So first of all, just get your paper clip or something uh, pointy and push it inside the hole here to clear all the binding settings in receiving it. So just push that there. Wait for the light to flash. And then that's now cleared all the binding settings. Okay, then we just push the button and hold it and wait for the light to turn to amber and start blinking. There you go. That's now blinking amber. It's difficult to see, like I say, because uh, it looks like it's red, but it is flashing amber. 
So the receiver unit is now in binding mode. We now need to set the thermostat into binding mode. Oh, just a quick point while I think of it, just in case you have the older programmer with a suitcase in the middle here. In about 2020, Honeywell changed the software inside this. Just to make this hard for this, they kept the part numbers the same. But anyway, the point being that the binding method should still be the same. If you have an old programmer and you find it's any different, then maybe just leave a message in the comments below to help others out. So now we need to push these two buttons here, this one and this one. So push them, hold them for about three seconds. As you can see, I've now gone to 14A. The T4 is pretty straightforward. We now press the tick and that takes us to 14B. Press tick again, takes us to 14C. We need to change the, the zero now to a one. So we just push the plus button there. Okay, that goes to one. We then need to confirm it by pressing the tick. And then you can see there's a little flashing symbol there. And you can see we've got a one here and that just confirms that the binding settings have now been cleared. Now we just need to go back by pressing the back button. Okay, that takes us to 14B. Press the back button again, it takes us to 14A. We now need to put it into binding mode. So at the end, we just push the, change that from a zero to a one by pushing plus. And then when I press the tick, it's then going to send that signal and it's going to link up to this flashing light here. So I'm just trying to hold that so you can see that. So I'll press tick. Okay, this has gone to a solid here. That light there has now just gone solid. And then we've got a one come up in here. And if it fails to connect, you'll get a zero come up here. But you can see we've got a one there. So that's now connected with that. We can now press the home button just there. Saves the settings. And that's it, we've now bound that T4R thermostat to the T3R receiver. Now let's just test this. So I'm gonna check we're in manual. So go to auto, to manual, now we're in manual. Now let's just put the temperature up. And what we at now, 24, let's take it to 26, say there we go. And we're looking for that green light. There you go, Let that green light's come on there. And let's put it back down again. Okay, 19. And, uh, and we'll watch the flame go out on the front of the display as well. There it goes, it's gone. Okay, but we've got a solid symbol up in there and you saw this is now uh, turning that on and off. So that is that one there bound. So it's exactly the same procedure with the, with the T3. Now you may have noticed that the T3 in the instructions, it doesn't tell you how to rebind this. So I, I worked this out on my own, but from doing this one, because I thought, hang on a minute, this might be the same on, on this unit. And it kind of is, but the buttons are the other way around. So we do exactly the same here again. We clear our binding settings, push the uh, little pin, safety clip, whatever, in the hole. One, two, there it just flashed. That's that clear the binding settings. We now push the button. One, two, three. There you go. That's now flashing. So you can see that's now flashing amber in there. Again, it's quite hard to see because the lights have got in here. All right, then we just need to go into this one here and put this one into binding mode. This is, uh, like I said, this is exactly the same. Uh, but uh, you, this one here, you, you definitely have to push a button to light the display at first. So I'm just going to push the minus. Okay, look, this display up. Now we push this button here and this one here, the minus. Okay, so push those two. Three seconds, hold in. And there we are. And we've gone to the same place again, 14A. And the difference with this one is we now have to scroll through and you don't press the tick button. So we've got to press the plus to go to 14B. Press plus again, 14C. Now we press the tick. So we now change the zero to a one, press plus. We want to accept those changes, so we press tick. So we now cleared all the binding settings in this unit. And you see our light is still flashing there. So we need to go back into this unit here now. So we need to press the minus and this button here again for three seconds. One, two, three. There we go. Then we go to 14A, which is the one which we want. So we do press tick now. Now we change that to a one, like that. We press tick again. 
and now we're looking for that signal to be sent there you go look the green lights turn solid we've got a one come up in there meaning that it's made a connection and then we press the back button to save it back again and there we go and just to show that that is now connected uh, let's see we're still in manual are we yep yeah, manual back to manual put the temperature up we're at 23.5 now let's put up to there we go 26 there you go and let's look for that little symbol coming on and there we go that little light's lit up now so the board has come on let's put our temperature back down again There you go, look for that little click. And there you go. And that's it. So you can see that it was pretty straightforward. And I hope that helps you out if you're an engineer and you need to swap these around. You might not need to at this point in time, but maybe in a couple of years uh, when you've got a few of these uh, in your van, you've had people who change them. You might have a couple spare and then maybe someone's broken theirs or the receiver stopped working or they've broken the thermostat. It's a good way to take one out and test the unit, see what is working and isn't working. It could save you a lot of time if you try and do some fault detection and work out exactly what's wrong. I've certainly done that in the past and it saved the customer and myself a lot of stress and hassle and not to mention time. Once you've finished doing your testing, you then may want to rebind your thermostat to the receiver. And of course, the procedure for that is exactly the same as in the video, but obviously using the corresponding thermostat to go with that receiver. Right, that's about it then. So I do hope my video has been helpful to you. If you want to watch my next video, then you can click on the link just here. And if you found my video helpful in any way, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. And like I said, that will help others to find your video. And if you enjoyed the video, then you can click on subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. Bye for now, and I'll see you next time.